Good evening, folks. From the looks of it, it might look like yet another product talk. But don't worry, I'm not here to bore you with a lecture. I'm Nitish Gulati. By day, I work as a product manager with a startup. And by night, I run my own website and blog that is www.nitishgulati.com. Today, I'll be sharing with you about the coffee mug paradigm. I see a few confused expressions there and some puzzled expressions at the back. So in essence, my topic for today is Lean Product Marketing, but with the help of this case study. So let's quickly deep dive. The sector I've targeted is food tech, three companies, Tiny Owl, Dine Out, and Swiggy. The key factor here being, these startups were going nuts over coffee mugs. What was the focus? Relentless distribution of these coffee mugs to attract free customers to stocks. So let's do a situation analysis. The model was pure play offline marketing to attract customers to stalls. Peak engagement intervals were three, that is breakfast, lunch, and snacks. The total engagement time per day was 420 minutes, and the location was Bayrock, SZ, Hyderabad. Let's take a bird's eye view of the metrics available. Staff at the stall for dine out, Swiggy, and dine out. Stall positions notice one for tiny all only, since they were present for one day. Number of days one. Cashback offered was 100 rupees for dine out, none for Swiggy and 100% up to Rs. 150 for Tiny Owl. The mugs handed out were 420, 168 and none for Tiny Owl. Store decoration was simple, grand and moderate. We'll get to this in a while as to how we arrived to these calculations. The orders achieved were 84 only for Swiggy. And in different time, as we saw, was 420 each, but 300 for Tiny Owl. Now what happens in real life? The VP of Marketing or the CMO would come to me and say, uh, hey, Ritish, uh, you as the PM, you went ahead with a hypothesis and uh, so you, you, know, you, you, you were able to fetch out some data as well. And don't get me wrong, but it is somewhat working, but is it really measurable? Now, the meta information that I'm able to draw out from this conversation is that one, it's not really lean. Two, there seems to be a lack of KPIs, key performance indicators. And three, if KPIs do exist, which facets of that coordinated marketing campaign can actually help? In order to address these questions, let's talk about the product marketing. What is it? Validate learning and judge the needs of early customers. Have an MVP and be agile around it with respect to marketing. Experimentation and planning. Testing and metrics are vital to growth. So let's read that. Let's apply this. Business case. Dine out. Install the app, enter the code, get a cashback, and get a free coffee mug. Swiggy. Install the app, place an order, and then get a coffee mug. Tiny out. Get a cashback of 100 to 150 rupees. Play a dartboard game. If you are able to win it, then get a cashback of some amount. And then you win a coffee mug. Now the common issues that were across this customer journey was one, there were network issues across these three products since 3 still doesn't work appropriately. Two, less consumers for Swiggy since people had to actually place an order. And three, time to play game in Tiny, tiny Owl's case was a bit more and they lost 120 minutes since they were not present for the breakfast slot. Now the overall customer journey time was two minutes for Dine Out, four to five minutes for Swiggy and three minutes for Tiny Owl. Now, let's look into the non-tangible factors. The stall attractiveness. That was the physical presence of the brand. For Tiny Out, it was a simple table with a banner. For Tiny Out, it was a simple table yet again with a banner behind and a dartboard game. But with Swiggy, it was completely different. If I were to walk down a road and with a McD and a KFC on the street side, a Swiggy would still be able to stand out strongly. They had a huge 3D logo, a huge LCD running some, uh, some animations, and a bright red stall. They had that oof, wow factor. So I was able to figure out and draw this Likert scheme and see that actually Swiggy was winning in this case. Now what I've done here is basically put costs to the metrics that we saw earlier. And I would draw your attention to just two points. One, if you see, the rent for Tiny Owl was the lowest, that is 14,000 but the cost, the expenditure was the highest. Two, 
the mugs handed out for 8400 rupees for swiggy but the orders placed were again 8400 <coughs> so what essentially happened here swiggy was able to nullify its cost of procuring those coffee mugs now based on all this analysis we were able to draw out kpis three core paradigms first consumer is the king the winner was dino, dino simply because all i had to do was go there and install the app and get a free cash pack as well as a coffee mug. As a consumer, I had to put none effort. Wow factor. As mentioned earlier, Swiggy's brand presence was immense and they were able to draw customers to the stores. So in that case, we clearly won it out. Balanced market strategy. Now this one was the most important paradigm and has three components. ROI. As discussed earlier, Swiggy was able to nullify the cost of procuring those coffee mugs. So the return on investment was solved. Customer acquisition. Once along the customer journey, through your marketing campaign, you are forcing or enabling the consumer to actually use your product. That is place an order of 50 rupees. Your customer acquisition is solved. Customer retention. Now what happened here? Swiggy so got customers into the, into the platform. But in terms of retention, now what they had to do was, instead of burning out money for different personas, all they had to do was target those customers and enable them to come back to the platform again. So there goes your problem of unnecessarily burning money. So in that case as well, Swiggy came out as the clear cut winner. But the objective of this case study was not to find out the winner. The more important thing to understand is, what could the other startups have done differently? Removing impediments. In Agile, we always talk about product owners enabling stakeholders to remove obstacles so that they can work peacefully. Now, in Tiny House case, let me rewind the business case. Go to Tiny House store, get a cashback coupon of 100 rupees. If you play the dartboard game and win it, you again get a cashback coupon and you get a chance to win a coffee mug. But where in this entire customer journey was the Tiny House app? Nowhere. The product was entirely missing in the marketing campaign. So, Tiny House actually, on the other hand, success, successfully created impediments rather than removing them. Two, just-in-time reviews. In Agile, we have this concept of retrospection, daily stand-ups, and that helps. That helps in keeping everybody aligned. What Tiny House could have done differently was, they were available for two days. On the first day, they, they garnered a lot of word-of-mouth publicity. Now, on the second day, they could have actually enabled consumers that only when you place an order, you will get a free coffee cup. So that would have helped them in actually figuring out whether people are actually invested in the product. Secondly, it would have helped them in reduction of costs. So to, so to, put, to add a few pointers to lean product marketing, one, measurements are important. If you don't have the data, try and get it. Try and get, try and create it out. Two, retrospect and plan for a sustainable pace. We keep talking about this in Agile, but it's equally important in marketing campaigns. Focus on building experience for consumers. As we saw in the example of Tiny Out, the product was completely missing for consumers. And lastly, deep product marketing is not a big bang approach. You need to have an MVP with, with respect to your marketing campaigns so that you can figure out what exactly is working. So with this, I would conclude this case study called the Coffee Mug Paradigm. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nitish. Uh, Audience, um, please vote on the Class Dojo app. It's still uh, active and uh, Dina is collating on this course. Uh, may I request uh, the jury to please uh, give their opinion? Very nice conference presentation. Uh, I think it was, uh, I mean, I didn't expect what you were talking about. Uh, I, I don't know if this three data points are sufficient, but it, okay, at least it's the, it's the whole group. I, I was just generally overall. I thought it was a very, very interesting take on something quite meaningful. I thought coffee mug is such a uh, bizarre perspective. So I'm happy. I think that the whole thing was, was clean. Lots of clean data presentation. So, uh, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I uh, had the same thought. Um, you know, hearing you, it feels like you know this guy knows what he's talking about. Got the data, got the information. For me, a little bit of the context was missing. I don't know how many people here know about these startups, dining out, Swiggy, and takeout, and what actually they were trying to do. And I get the point that you know I kind of pieced it together that they're trying to attract people and give them the coffee mug. 
aspects of that, but a little bit of the setup could have helped right, in terms of what they're trying to do. And when you started with, you know, lean, agile marketing, right? I mean, these are completely different orthogonal things that you're trying to bring together, right? So, uh, why they need to be brought together? Uh, I, I felt that a little bit more time could have been spent on that, establishing that context. So, uh, I also give you a Dino shut down. Dino is still struggling. Are we ready with the class closing course? Nice one.